Hello and welcome. Thank you all for being here today. I am Nick Kenoki, Director of Technology for the Asset Leadership Network, and I'm very excited for this uh, three-way discussion today with uh, Lindsay Ziegler, myself, and Executive Director Mike Bordenero. Uh, before we get underway, we just want to thank our patron members, um, the Definitive Logic, Onuma System, ABS Quality Evaluations, and Jacobs as well as our other organizational members, especially the Andrew James Advisory Group uh, for Lindsay's participation today and continued support. And we also wanna highlight uh, the Andrew James Advisory Group in general for their upcoming ALN A55K professional certification course that starts, I believe, October 24th. So that's coming up. And if you're interested, uh, if you're not already interested, then maybe you will be after our discussion today about the benefits of that course. So um, reach out to anyone on this call and we'll uh, get, you, get you started down that, down that process. Um, we also want to note the value and benefits from asset management upcoming uh, addition to the series. And that's with Richard Dietz from, Dietz from DC government and Andrew McAlpine from Transgrid. And so that's October 12th, uh, 5 to 6 p.m. Washington, D.C. time. Uh, just one more note before we get underway. If you're out there, we'd love to hear from you. So send any comments, questions, or feedback to the chat uh, or use the Q&A function. And Mike Bordenero, uh, welcome. Uh, thank you, Nick. And thank you for joining the discussion today. Nick is uh, joining us because he... Uh, is an A55K professional. He's taken this course and uh, we want to get his comments in there. And I see that a number of the uh, participants today, uh, attendees are uh, uh, A55K professionals also. So if you want to throw in any questions or comments, uh, please feel free. So welcome, Lindsay. You're on mute and then we're going to let Nick start you off. I was, I apologize. So Nick, what's uh, the first question we usually ask? Oh, just, um, you know, why don't you say a few things about how you got where you are today, Lindsay, uh, you know, helping <laughs> to facilitate this course. Um, so uh, it's been a, uh, a very long and somewhat convoluted path. Uh, I spent a lot of the early part of my career um, managing technology and managing specifically tech, both technology, um, hardware assets, and software. Um, and uh, that's a, a, a very different beast from what a lot of people think of as asset management. Um, but they're assets that you absolutely must manage. Um, and most businesses today, if their systems go down, they're dead in the water. So they really are critical assets. Um, then uh, at some point I ended up working for um, a water company, the Indianapolis Water Company, still doing technology assets, but it was my first exposure to the kinds of assets that a municipal utility needs to maintain and deal with. Um, I had the first week I was there, they asked if I wanted to go out and watch them fix a main break, which was fascinating. <laughs> um, and uh, so that was a, a real major learning curve. Um, and then after that, I went into consulting. Um, I did consulting for, um, Gainesville Regional Utilities and uh, the Pension Fund of the Christian Church and uh, Standard Life of Indiana. And I did some consulting work for Premier Life of Luxembourg, uh, which was loads of fun. Going to Luxembourg and getting to speak French was, was fun. Um, and then uh, as basically, I think as an offshoot of the Gainesville gig was how I got connected with the ALN. Um, and really got interested in asset management as a discipline. And of course, I am also an A55K graduate, and I teach the course now. So it's a, it's a lot of fun. Mike, if so, I might ask one follow-up before you jump in, 
um, just that concept of asset management as a discipline was something discussed a little bit at our recent event uh, at the National Academy of Sciences. And someone said, you know, oftentimes the asset management department is one person or, you know, a few as compared to other departments of a large organization, which have may have many. And just how important it is to kind of grow the appreciation for asset management as a discipline and all the value and benefits that it can bring to especially a large organization or municipality, uh, something I'm, I'm really excited that we're involved in, in helping spread that word. Yeah, I think it's really um, critical that I, I love the, the mission that the ALN is pursuing, working to get visibility into asset management as something other than greasing the machines once a month. Um, that's maintenance. And asset management is a, a much broader and much more important, really, um, process and discipline to think about. So getting that visibility, I think, is huge. So kudos to the ALN for the work that they're doing in that regard. Well, thank you. And we're also trying to distinguish between asset management and asset leadership. We have a presentation to a new patron member. We are very confident we'll be coming on board. And I have a uh, slide that says asset leadership is establishing the policy and culture for asset management. And only leadership can establish policy. So um, the course is as good for the leaders to take as it is for people with boots on the ground to be taking because it allows that line of sight and common language to be used from the C-suite to the ground floor. So There's a lot of emphasis in the course on leadership and the, the role of leadership and the responsibilities of leadership. Um, so that's that's perfectly in keeping with the idea of creating asset leadership. Um, when you have one guy who is the asset management department, um, you have a potential, what we used to call a Mack truck problem. Um, sure. If he happens to get hit by a Mack truck, yep. you're in a world of hurt. And so that to me is a failure of leadership to say, well, we just, we got Joe back down in there in the basement. And by the way, the fact that the, the maintenance guys and the asset guys are in the basement, out of sight, out of mind, that I think is an issue. It, it makes it hard um, to get that visibility into the importance of asset management. Lindsay, what comes, one question that comes to my mind is for a small organization, um, what if there isn't a ton of other opportunities, you know, what if it's hard to grow from one guy as the asset manager? Uh, and, you know, can you relate that to the value of not just asset managers taking this course? So first of all, um, if you have people other than the asset manager, taking the course, then you start to build um, a team that understands the importance and the discipline of asset management. And that can get you forward into thinking about things like, okay, I can't, I'm small enough, I can't really afford two guys that are full-time asset managers, but I should be creating a backup for that critical role. Um, and maybe what I should be doing is creating um, a, a, a tag team, if you will, for that process. I mean, there's a, there's a lot of different ways that you can um, slice that baloney, but you're, you're, you want to try um, to make sure that you have backup for your critical roles and your, your asset manager is a critical role. So how does the course help someone who may have been doing asset management for a number of years 
uh, and help somebody who is all new to asset management. So can you tell us a little bit about how the course is structured and how it helps everyone? So the course is structured uh, based on the structure of the ISO 55,000 um, set of standards. And um, so it goes through the uh, different areas of emphasis within the standard. And it talks about things that are valuable to whether you're, you are just starting out or whether you have been doing this for a long time. Um, if you've been doing it for a long time, you may come into it thinking, well, I already know all this stuff, but I guarantee that as you go through the information that's in the standard, you're gonna learn some things that can benefit you in your job. And you're definitely gonna learn some things that may help you communicate with other people in the organization, which then can turn around and help you get that visibility into asset management so that that whole process can be improved within the organization. And then for the new guy, because it's all new to him, to come into this with the idea that um, asset management is not just maintenance, it's not just greasing the, the machine once a month, but there's a lot more to it. You know, that can really, I think, uh, I think that can excite people. It can get people to think about, wow, there, there may be more to this job than I thought. And there, there may actually end up being a career path somewhere for this job. And we've got a comment from Jack Kelly, but before we get to that, I want to talk a little bit about the structure of the course. When I took it with the first group, it was basically a three and a half day um, class in person. It was intensive and it was great exchange between the students in the course. Nick, what was it like when you took the course? Um, well, it, it took a little longer, you know, it was maybe a little less intensive, um, but, uh, you know, as online environments do, they allow people in different geographies and um, with other differences as well to kind of be on a similar platform and interact as peers. Um, so for someone like me who, you know, doesn't have a lot of the background that a lot of people who end up in interested in asset management do, uh, it, it was just cool to be involved and, and it was expansive, you know, it helped me see from other perspectives to interact a bit with the other students coming from all over. So but I will say, Mike, that that the in-person courses, of course, there's a lot of classroom discussion. Um, and when we had to scramble to create an online course at the beginning of the, the COVID pandemic, um, we gave some serious thought to how not to lose that, because that is a hugely valuable part of the, the learning there is learning from each other as well. So as how do you do that? Stuff. So we have a couple of ways. What, thank you for that leading question, Michael. Um, we have a couple of ways that uh, we designed into the course to help uh, bridge that gap. So we have pre-recorded lectures uh, that you listen to, but then we have uh, discussion forums that are uh, linked to each lecture. And those have tended to generate a lot of good uh, back and forth and, and discussion among the uh, students. But then we also have live webinar class sessions. Um, and those are moderated by your instructor. And those tend to be pretty free ranging discussions. And the thing that everybody has said that is valuable is, not just learning what's in the standard, but hearing other people's perspectives and, and learning other people's experiences um, brings a lot of value to the course. You know, well, I'm, I'm trying to adjust my reading glasses so my light doesn't shine off them. There, that's a little better. <laughs> Mike, if I would, uh, one thing that comes to mind in that vein uh, is Richard Dietz and what the story he told at our recent event about why he was at a water conference when DC government doesn't manage the water assets for the city. And he was saying 
basically it's it's because we have a shared vocabulary because um, the because that and because a shared vocabulary allows you to connect and resonate and learn from each other in a very powerful way that you know it's not impossible to do without but certainly helps and I, I think that the a55k course goes a long way in establishing that shared vocabulary for people across industries and at different places and organizations uh, to show that maybe while we have maybe different day-to-day -day goals, we in general have a lot of shared higher arching goals that align. So that people kind of have leads... asked why we spend time on uh, vocabulary in the course, which we do. Um, and we take that from the standard. Um, a long time ago, I took a, uh, an, an executive management course. And one of the things we talked about was communication. There are over 200,000 words in the English language. The average person's working vocabulary is between one and 2,000 words. So going through and understanding a common definition to these words that are specific to asset management, um, gives you, as Richard said, that that common vocabulary, that common frame of reference. So um, when I say asset, you know what I'm talking about. That ties in with what Jack Kelly mentions uh, about the importance of uh, creating and sustaining an effective asset management program. And, and it's not just about the person. And to have right. that program, people have to be speaking the same language. Yes. So that's one of the things that I think is important about uh, the teams that have taken the course together. Mm -hmm. There have been a number of those. Can you talk a little bit about uh, the benefits to an asset management team and how uh, different uh, teams have approached the course? Well, it, it kind of depends on where you're coming from. Um, so some teams, uh, some organizations uh, send teams that are um, implementing and responsible for asset management within their organization. And we've had um, four municipal teams that have been trained. Um, we've had one, two, three, four, five, six, seven consulting firms that have trained teams. Um, and then we've also had a, a branch of the Department of Defense that has trained a team. Um, for the consulting firms, um, what we've found is that they're often training teams in order to create a practicum in, asset, in ISO 55000 and asset management. Um, and that obviously brings value to their organization and it helps them support their clients um, who are looking into how do I do this ISO 55,000 thing now that it's looking like the federal government might be kind of wanting us to do that. Um, that's, I think that's as far as the federal government is right now is kind of, kind of wanting us to do that. They're, they're not really all the way there yet, but um, people who are forward looking are looking at that from the perspective of it, it, it could happen and we better be thinking about it. Um, and that's where the consulting firms have come in. And, and almost all of these consulting firms have sent a team and then have sent another team. And in some cases have sent four separate teams, um, which, you know, to me speaks to the value of the program for that organization. They wouldn't keep sending people if they didn't think it was valuable. Definitely um, a good sign. Yeah. Um, now, the, the municipalities, they're looking at something different. They're looking at a much more immediate, we, we are, maybe we're being required um, to implement ISO 55000, or maybe there's already a bill in the legislature that says we're going to be, and so they're trying to get ahead of that and, and get that moving, and um, more than one of them has sent multiple teams over multiple occasions. Um, we had one consulting firm, it's a small engineering firm. We trained the entire office all at once. <laughs> um, 
Um, that was that was a that was a, a fun visit there. Um, so I think from the perspective of both both DOD and the municipalities, what they're looking at is an immediacy in terms of getting ISO fifty five thousand underway, and the more people you have that understand the standard and understand what the requirements are the better time you're going to have putting a team together and being able to make that happen. And I think that's the advantage uh, of the teams for organizations that are actually looking to implement. And as I said, for the consulting firms, I think they're looking at how do we best support our clients who are looking at asset management and ISO 55,000? And can we create a consulting practicum that does that. So that was a lot of words. I hope it helped. <laughs> yes, uh, that was uh, very good. And uh, uh, there are people from the federal government online. And I, I'll say that there are pockets of the federal government that get this very well. And we're hoping that it becomes more uniform across the entire federal government. And Courses like this would be very helpful for the federal government to take. <laughs> <laughs> they uh, would. Something Bob Leach said in a recent follow-up from our event was, uh, you know, just kind of saying it's it's not necessarily that ISO fifty five thousand and asset management in general are, are rocket science that you need, you know, extreme education to understand. It's but it and yet it is still quite helpful to have a structured approach, not just to asset management, but to your education around asset management and to the language and to the, the necessary parts and leadership buy-in and, and almost like a refresher of all the best practices that a smart person may have come to on their own, but uh, you know, definitely having this A55 course to say, no, we, we definitely don't want to skip the step where we involve interested and affected parties. We don't want to skip the part where we continuously improve after we have some success. You know, there again, none of it rocket science, but good to have a system uh, uh, in, in place to, to make sure that no process is overlooked, left out, or forgotten. And I'll share something from Jim Dieter related to that, where the amount of training in this course seems perfect. If it's the three and a half days of intense in-person activity, you're, you're transformed very quickly. And if it's the hour, you know, two hours a day for 10 uh, working days, that seems to be about the right amount because Jim said that in one of the projects where he was involved, there was only an hour on ISO 55,000 and that that team did not have the cohesiveness that teams he has seen coming out of the course have had. So I think it's a good dose and it's not a six month certification or anything like that. It's just right, anyway. You were going to say something, Lindsay? Um, well, unfortunately, that train of thought got derailed. I'm, I, I'm sorry I derailed you there. <laughs> um, I was going to, going to mention that um, th they have the ability, uh, once they finish the course, you know, I we don't expect them to memorize 55,001, and we definitely don't want to don't expect them to memorize all the lists of things to look at in 55002 which is so 55002 is guidelines for implementation um, has tons of wonderful information um, so we expect that people will use those as reference material um, it's like keeping your your textbook. Don't don't throw the textbook away because six months from now you may not remember the details, but it's still in the textbook. So we do encourage everyone to have access to the standards because 
if they're going to implement, they're going to need them. They're going to use them. They're they're going to go and look at 55,001 and say, okay, am I I'm missing any of these shall statements? Am I missing any of these requirements that I need to do organizationally um, to get this done? Lindsay, this uh, kind of reminds me again of your Mack truck problem that you mentioned. Um, <laughs> you know, a single point of failure is never good. Um, no. And not just because we worry about the single point being hit by a Mack truck, but also because you know we we forget things, uh, and and so it 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 brings it back to the importance of creating an asset management system that in includes repeatable processes that are set up using all the tools of modern technology as well as standards like ISO fifty five thousand so to make sure again that nothing is overlooked or forgotten about, and then if there is you know, a Mack truck type incident or someone for just forgets simply, uh, the system is already put in place um, and, and the cadence of continuous improvement rolls on to, you know, transform as the environment, the operating environment transforms. And it just seems like, I don't know if a closed system is the right, you know, kind of uh, way to think about it, but something where things don't get lost and we, you know, have this recurrent recursive fashion of taking in new information, interpreting it, maybe affecting our changing our processes to incorporate a better way to move forward. And, you know, it just, it seems like really important for, for any organization, whether they have one asset manager or a whole team. Yeah. I, I would say the word you're looking for is robust. Robust. It's a robust That's system or you, you, part of your asset management journey needs to be ensuring you have a robust system in place so that you don't fall prey to the Mack truck. So Lindsay mentioned that uh, the students can, you know, reference ISO 55,000 documents in an ongoing basis, but you cannot reference it during the certification test. Nick, will you give us a very quick description of the certification test process for the web-based uh, testing? You said the process or the test itself? However you want to <laughs> describe it. Well, I don't want to say too much about the test other than it's it's quite reasonable. Um, you know, it's it's not something that if you didn't take the course, I don't think you would pass, mm -hmm. which is good. Um, but also if you take the course, it's not, it's very unlikely that you're not going to pass this test because again, they're, they're not rocket science things. A lot of it is, you know, you're, they're now fresh in your mind. Um, what is the test? Uh, it's multiple choice, um, 50 questions and online using Moodle. Uh, and, uh, you know, basically you, once you're finish your course, uh, we will follow up with you to make sure you know how to take the test, which is simply registering with the Moodle page and then accessing the course and going through the basic security um, functionality to, to make sure that there's not uh, cheating going on because, um, you know, we just want the results to be accurate. Uh, we don't want people who are who didn't really pay attention and are not prepared to, uh, to, to, to go forward without realizing that, you know, we, we do want to show that people have learned something and, and put our mark and say, these people, you know, are 55 K certified and they're ready to help your organization on this journey. Um, and so not everyone has passed, but people do have uh, time to take the test again. Yeah. And when they have, they have succeeded. Uh, yeah. So if I, I, the way we describe the test for the students um, is it is difficult, but it's not brutal. Um, it is a closed book exam. It is monitored. Mo it is proctored user using monitoring software called Proctorio. So you do actually have. Um, an AI system that watches and makes sure you're not looking at your notes, uh, for example. Um, 
and make sure that you're not asking the person next to you what the 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 answer is. So um, as Nick said, it's 50 questions, uh, multiple choice, true, false. Um, there are there are tricky questions in there, but there are not trick questions. So there are no questions in there that are designed to fool you and make you yes wrong. Um, but there are questions that are detailed enough that you're going to have to think about it. Um, and I will say I did not score 100 percent on the exam. <laughs> <laughs> nobody has. Nobody. No. Has. Nobody has. Um, I can tell you that um, you can ask me what your score was all you want, and I will not be able to tell you because um, that is That's, not something that ALN will do. Yeah. That's that's ours. We have a separation of church and state. We do. Andrew James Advisory Group provides the course and ALN provides the test and the two do not mix and we don't tell scores. Yeah. And uh, I'd like to just close by saying that we're really focusing on culture and no better way to improve your culture than with education. So we highly suggest that organizations send teams through this course and establish a culture of asset management. So thank you so much, Lindsay, for joining us. You're very welcome. Thank you for inviting me. And Nick, if you could take us uh, through the ending. Uh, David Brewer wasn't with us when we first started and I want him to see that we have the new Jacobs logo up. Thank you, David, for getting us the, the new Jacobs logo. Of course, yes, and thank you to all of our patron members, not just Jacobs and other organizational members, especially the Andrew James Advisory Group uh, and Lindsay Ziegler for participating in this lively discussion here today. And again, new A55K course starting uh, October 24th, so please reach out soon to... There are still some seats available for that, but it's uh, filling up. And we also uh, want to note that in about two weeks' time, October 12th, uh, 5 to 6 p.m. in Washington, D.C. time, we have a value and benefits from asset management uh, series installment uh, featuring Richard Dietz from the D.C. government and Andrew McAlpine. And uh, that should be a great event, as they often are, including our Australian colleagues. Always are. Always are. <laughs> uh, thank you all for being here today and we will catch you next week on ALN Thursday at three thank you all thanks Nick thanks Lindsay thanks thank you Bye.